Hey, welcome back to the eDrum Workshop. I'm Luke and I hope you're having a great day. I finally received some closure on the ongoing multipad saga, so I thought I'd put out a final update video to round out this trilogy, I suppose, of videos about the DB Drums N-Pad and its various other versions. I got a response from DB Drums about it about a month or so after my previous video on the topic. If you've not already seen that one, there's a card up in the corner. Pop it open in a new tab and have a watch if you're interested, and then come back and watch this one as I'm basically starting this video from where that one left off up until the current day. So as per the previous video, I found out about the existence of the Gear for Music DD90 Digipad sampler and how it was almost identical to the DB Drums N pad that I'd backed on Kickstarter. At this point I'd been trying to get hold of DB Drums through Facebook Messenger, which is how I'd previously spoken to them, but I'd had nothing back. The day after that video went out, a comment was left on a Facebook post for my video from somebody else who'd also supported the N pad on Kickstarter. Nick Keaton has spoken to Julian from DB Drums and was told that the N-Pad had been copied in China where it's being made. He said that he got in contact with them by a form on the DB Drums website, so I thought, well, I'll fire off a message from there too, just to see if I get a response. Two days after the video was posted, Digital Drummer Magazine commented that they had identified the manufacturer HXW Music, a brand that somebody else had also commented about on the video that DB Drums used for their stock kits, not Medelli as I had previously guest. Digital Drummer said that they believed that HXW could be the real manufacturer of this multipad, and they'd found a version of it under their brand Avatar, which is the PD705 multipad. I did a bit of digging and I found some videos on the YouTube channel Glory M that dated back to about March, which was pretty interesting. The next day, Digital Drummer followed up to say that they'd spoken to DB Drums and that they insisted that there are differences between the pads. The end pad will have a gigabyte of internal storage rather than the much smaller 128 megabytes that the Gear for Music DD90 has, and they also conceded that the N-Pad had been co-developed with a Chinese manufacturer. So the copying thing, I'm not sure if that was a communication mix-up or what, but it was nice to have some kind of word about what was actually going on. In the meantime, I'd not heard back from DB Drums on any of the communication methods that I tried. A couple of weeks later, Digital Drummer included their correspondence and a write-up about it in their June newsletter, along with with a little mention of what I'd found out so far. Most interestingly, they wrote about how DB Drums said that under the agreement with the manufacturer that they'd collaborated with, DB Drums doesn't have exclusive selling rights to the multipad. That would explain why HXW slash Avatar is marketing the product itself. And it then goes on to say that the Gear for Music version isn't the same with the same explanation of the 128 megabyte, one gigabyte memory difference and whatnot. So this was sort of clearing up the bulk of the questions that I had, but it was a shame that I'd still had no response from DB Drums themselves, and we still weren't 100% sure exactly where the Kickstarter stood. I did a bit more snooping around after this, and I came across a video about the HXW avatar by another Nick from DrummingReview.com, which is an awesome blog by the way, you should go check it out alongside his personal YouTube channel. There's some great gear reviews between the two, the guy knows his stuff. It was interesting to see this thing in action in what wasn't just a promo video, and from what I can tell, it's looking pretty much the same as the other two models and in the comments he mentioned that the avatar version only has 128 megabytes of memory too. So I think that this is definitely the same as the gear for music version. There's also examples of all of the kits at the end of the video so if you do want to hear them I've linked to that video in the description and I'm going to touch on the sounds again at the end of this video too. I was contacted again not long after this by Nick the other kickstarter backer to say that he'd received an email with a link to an online form to confirm the delivery address for his NPAD order. I hadn't received this email, so I was quite surprised. Fortunately, he linked me to it and also provided another email that he'd been using to speak to Julian at DB Drums so I could try another contact method. I tried to fill out the form, but it wasn't letting me submit it as it was asking for a zip code made up of only numbers. Postcodes in the UK also contain letters, and actually this little bit of information here ends up making a bit more sense towards the end of this entire situation. So I fired off another email to this new email address and I included the fact that I couldn't submit the form in that email to try and get things cleared up. Again, I got nothing back. 
So now we're up to some time last week or so, and I spotted an Instagram post by DB Drums talking about the NPAD, so I thought, this is the time to ask on a public platform. I used my personal Instagram account rather than my EDW one, and I asked about the shipping date for the NPAD with a nice sprinkling of emojis. I was replied to the next day, was told the end of July, which was lining up with what we'd seen from the last Kickstarter update and Digital Drummers article, and then two days later, a message popped up on my Facebook Messenger. It was DB Drums. Drums. I was excited and intrigued. In the message, there were apologies for the lack of communication, a mix up with the community manager glossing over my messages and not passing it on. He'd only spotted this message recently with the fact that COVID has obviously slowed things down for businesses in most countries, and with English not being his first language, it took him a little while to put down his thoughts. So the explanation about the situation followed, and it very much mirrors what was told to Digital Drummer. This product has different names in each country. I can sell the end pad only in the American and the Latin American market. If you want to get the sample pad, you will have to buy it from Gear for Music because it is branded under Gear for Music for all Europe. For Asia, it's under Avatar. And then to paraphrase the next bit, we've been working on the M-Pad with a Chinese company and different regions carry different branding around the world for commercialization. And due to all of this situation, I can't sell you the N-Pad, unluckily. I was offered a refund for the N-Pad as it couldn't be sold to me under that branding in the UK and I received my money back the next day. So the official story is, as reported on by Digital Drummer, NPAD was co-developed alongside a company in China and there are different branding and distribution deals in place for different regions. There could be differences between them. As mentioned, Digital Drummer's communication tells of 1GB of sample memory in the NPAD compared to 128MB in the DD90 and the Avatar PD705. And I'm unsure of whether there will be anything else distinguishing these pads from each other. And I did mention the sounds earlier when talking about Nick's YouTube review. I've only had chance to hear a few demos of the NPAD's built-in sounds, but I've managed to match up a couple to what seemingly seems to be on the Avatar PD705, but I'm not sure if there might be some sound bank differences. I also decided to purchase a Gear for Music DD90 Digipad with my NPAD refund. That just arrived yesterday and it seems like the sounds are the same as the ones in the Avatar branded version. And that all actually makes sense because I did have a comment around the time that I was speaking to Digital Drummer from somebody who took apart their gear for music DD90 and found that it had HXW PD705 labels on everything. I do also have the manual for both the Gear for Music DD90 and the NPAD, the latter of which was kindly sent over by a viewer. As of yet, I haven't spotted any major differences in functionality, but I'll do more of a dive into that, as I will be doing a full review of the Gear for Music DD90 once I've tested it fully. And I'll try to clear up any differences that I find between the DD90, the NPAD, and the Avatar PD705. So look out for that when it drops. So that's pretty much the full story behind what's gone on with the DD90. DB Drums N pad and the mysterious case of its two twin multi pads. Overall, the lack of communication for a while aside, I'm reasonably understanding of the explanation that's given. It was a bit touch and go when we only had speculation, but I think it's pretty well cleared up after a bit of a push. And it wouldn't surprise me if they might not have been able to explain until all of the details were in place between the companies. DB Drums were very quick to sort out my refund once they had contacted me, so that's a very promising and positive thing. I'll be keeping an eye out for the shipping of the MPAD at the end of the month to see what people who get hold of it think. Fortunately, this isn't a scam situation like some of us were previously worried about. I've spoken to Nick, the other Kickstarter backer, and he also got a refund, and I can only assume that if there were other backers outside of the territories that the NPAD are being sold in, that they also got a refund too. It's a shame that I wasn't able to get hold of the NPAD version with the larger memory, but I'm still going to put the DD90 through its paces so I can do a proper review on it. So are any of you thinking about picking up any various of this pad in your region. Let me know down in the comments along with what you think of this roller coaster ride. I'm personally just glad to have some clarity on the situation and to, you know, know what's going on. And a huge thanks to anybody who commented or got in touch with information that helped work through all of this. There's been a genuine feeling of community spirit with it over the last couple of months and it's been really enjoyable chatting to everybody. If you enjoyed this video, why not pop a like on it, subscribe to make sure that you don't miss the future DD90 digipad review amongst other videos check out any of these other videos on the screen and enjoy the rest of your day i'll see you in the next video cheers